I know I've talked about it before, the fact that I've been a wrestling fan for three decades, 30 years, skip the skip and whoop de whoop. I know I've talked before about I've always felt fortunate as a wrestling fan to have been able to experience the greatness, in my opinion, of the mid to late 80s, the Hogan era in WWF, and the Crockett era uh, pre-WCW. And how, as I became a teenager and started into young adulthood, if you will, that I was able to experience the entirety of the Monday Night Wars and how the business, when it found its footing and its identity, was able to sit there and change with the times and, you know, really appealed to me. I've been fortunate to see a lot of good professional wrestling in my lifetime. Sometimes it's short blips on the radar. Other times it's long extended periods. And sometimes it's just an occasional item here and there. Yeah, there's been bad. There's always been more than enough redeeming qualities for me to continue to watch, more than enough redeeming qualities for me to say this is good, this is entertainment as much as anything else is. You know, when I think about professional wrestling, you know, it's a big part of who I am. It's a big part of my identity, and it's been a big part of my life for 30 years. A huge part of my life. Again, it's part of who I am. There are many people that know me as the wrestling fan, or this wrestler's fan, or that wrestler's fan, or the guy that does the Dusty Rhodes voice, or whatever the case might be. You know, a lot of people that know me, when they think of me, they will think of professional wrestling. It is who I am in so many ways. So it breaks my heart to see this current state of American pro wrestling. You know, I wonder sometimes why I continue to watch. I wonder sometimes how the hell I can even tolerate it. And I'm wondering sometimes what the hell redeeming qualities that I'm looking for and what the hell redeeming qualities am I even finding to continue to justify devoting so much of my life to this crap? You know, I know I've got people out there that will still defend the current product and still justify what's going on and make excuses for it. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that American pro wrestling is boring as shit. The independence, the mainstream, it doesn't fucking matter. If this hurts your feelings too fucking bad, maybe it hurts your feelings because it's true. The simple fact of the matter is this shit absolutely fucking sucks. It's terrible and it's fucking boring as hell. American pro wrestling is boring on so many different levels in so many different ways in all aspects and components. Look at the companies, the major companies, if you will, ROH. I mean, this is a company that's been around, what, 13 damn years now? It still really doesn't matter all that much. An ROH that is so bad currently that it got a deal with Destination America and almost immediately Destination America has changed their mind and is now instead of having them be the lead-in to Impact Wrestling on Wednesday nights, they've taken them and put them in the 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern time slot. They want them to be the follow-up. They want Impact to be the lead-in to Destination America that late at freaking night. That's terrible. We're talking about a brand that tries to do so many things like their ECW, but newsflash, ECW died 14 fucking years ago. And so many people involved with professional wrestling that love to talk about ECW and live off of the alleged glory days of ECW seem to forget that ECW was about taking all of what was the establishment of professional wrestling and basically kicking it in the crotch and spitting in its fucking face. ECW was about doing things a different way. ECW was about a new direction, a new vision, a cr new creative philosophy. And ROH does none of that. It's like the cheapest form of fucking ECW ripoff and imitation this side of CZW that I've ever fucking seen. All that ROH does is give you lame-ass characters that pretty much all look the same, talk the same, act the same, and wrestle the same, and a bunch of matches that are way too damn long, involve way too many false finishes, way too much use of finishers, way too much no-selling, way too little fucking storytelling. All the while giving you absolutely nothing outside of that with their karate, ninjutsu, jujitsu, Brazilian bullshit to make you sit there and say, hey, this is a compelling, interesting product. Then when you look at the level of talent in ROH compared to what was there maybe five, seven years ago, how could anybody sit there and say this shit is great? And frankly, if I'm being so blunt and honest, 
When I look at the buzz about Ring of Honor, even the buzz about it is fucking boring. I remember four or five years ago, ROH fans, the ROH bots, as I used to call them, would defend that company's product through and through. It would be no matter what, ROH is the best. It's the best motherfucker wrestling in the world. And you hardly hear anything from a freaking ROH bot anymore, and they most certainly aren't going on Twitter talking about everything is so goddamn star spangled awesome. Even the ROH bots don't think this shit is that good. And the reactions of what they post and what they talk about and the lack of people doing videos about it clearly indicates this shit is dull, lame, stale, boring. Which brings me to TNA, another similar type of situation. TNA for so many years was trying to be WCW, all the while not understanding, other than the fact of bringing in everybody from WWE from the past, uh, that was the only thing they did that was in any way close to mirroring WCW. They forgot about so many other damn things that WCW actually did, and all the while, here's TNA. At least I used to say this about TNA. For all the dumb crap they did, and all the featuring of old guys that they did, and all the knee-jerk changes in storytelling, the nonsensical storytelling, and all of this, there were always enough redeeming qualities, whether it be the tag team division, the X division, the knockouts division, maybe guys like AJ Styles and Bobby Roode and James Storm, Samoa Joe, da 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 there was always enough to keep you engaged. There was always enough to make you sit there and say, I'm still okay with watching TNA. It's not that bad. And even with the crap that's really bad, you still had the good that could distract you from it. But even in that case, sometimes the bad was entertaining in and of itself. Sometimes the best components of TNA from an entertainment value were the train wreck elements. Sometimes, frankly, Fair or not to TNA, it was kind of that redheaded stepchild for so many years of professional wrestling. It was more fun to make fun of them for the dumb shit than to enjoy the good shit, if I'm being honest. But now we've got TNA here in 2015, a company again, just like ROH, that's been around 13 damn years. And we don't even know if they're going to have a television deal past September. TNA. We don't even know if they're going to have a television deal. This is a company that on their network can't even draw 400,000 viewers. This is a company that finally manages to get it right with somebody like Ethan Carter III, EC3, where they slowly built up a new face into being a world champion. And of course, now when they do it, nobody fucking cares. Look at how many people don't tweet about TNA anymore. Look at how, how many people don't talk about TNA anymore. Look at how many people don't care about TNA anymore. And it even seems like the people that wrestle and work for TNA don't give a damn anymore. Oh, newsflash, brand freaking resign. That's the most interesting thing that TNA has done in the past year is resign Bram umpteen dozen fucking times. And by the way, breaking news, Bram has just resigned to a new multi-year deal with total nonstop action. Impact wrestling, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I mean, all of these years later, you don't have hardly any recognizable faces in TNA. I mean, you really don't. I mean, it's just lame shit. And even the TNA bots, you've got some of the hardest of hardcores, and God bless them. I applaud them, because I don't know how the fuck they can do it. I don't know how the hell they can con themselves and convince themselves into thinking that this shit is any good. When you think of TNA now, there's nothing really redeeming in a good sense, there's not even anything redeeming in a bad sense to fucking make fun of. I stopped watching their brand, what, a year plus, almost a year and a half ago? And frankly, I haven't looked back. And I'm glad I haven't looked back. And that shit's boring. And then we get to GFW. I don't even know why I'm throwing this into the fucking mix. Oh, we're doing television tapings and we don't even have a TV network deal. Oh, it's your pilot. Oh, I'm sure you're going to take it to the network and you're going to fly right into the motherfucking burning trash can. I mean, this is how fucking American pro wrestling is. We've got a brand in GFW that doesn't even have their own television deal that's trying to utilize a business model that was employed by the NWA that hasn't been relevant in over 25 fucking years. And we got people trying to sit there and say that this is going to be good or this is going to be interesting. <laughs> a Jeff Jarrett fucking vanity project. GFW, global farce wrestling as I would call it. This is how bad it's gotten. People are turning to Jeff Jarrett with their hopes to save professional wrestling. And where he is employing a business model for wrestling that has been 
passe and outdated for over two and a half fucking decades. It's Global Force Wrestling. We're all about the world. So what are you going to get? Chris Masters. And then we talk about NXT. Oh my god. For a while there, I almost got caught up and almost bought into this shit. People sitting there talking about how NXT is the best brand, NXT is the best wrestling, and skip de skip and whoop de doo This is the future. Well, I tell you what, if this is the future of professional wrestling, and if NXT is the future of WWE, then God fucking help us all. Only WWE could take one hour of wrestling and make it boring as piss by ironically doing almost nothing but fucking wrestling. For all the complaints you have about WWE over the years, here's a new complaint. Too much fucking wrestling. What is NXT? Is it supposed to be something mainstream or is it supposed to appeal to hardcore fans? A lot of these hardcore fans that either experienced the Hogan and or Monday Night Wars eras, knowing that the in-ring component was only one part of it and frankly a very small part of it, everything else was what drew, everything else was what entertained. And yet now we're appealing to these people and somehow along the way it became all about boring, no-selling, Overusing finishes and false finishes, fucking in ring action, professional wrestling. It's about flips and kicks, not about the story and the consequences of actions. I mean, we're sitting there and pumping up NXT, and Finn Balor is the fucking NXT champion. And I'm sorry, that dude is boring as piss. That character in particular is boring as shit. So it would be only sensible to me that a brand that manages maybe to give you one story or one feud, kind of, sort of, out of an hour every single week where the bo boring-ass champion continues to be boring as piss, that the brand would be freaking boring. And again, if this is supposed to be the future, what the hell does that say about the future? It's just a reflection of what we get from the main roster of WWE. And speaking of WWE, holy Christ, how fucking boring is WWE today? We've got people trying to sit there and say that Seth Rollins is an entertaining individual. I don't know how. I don't know why. He's just one. I'm not even blaming Seth Rollins here because he's just one of the latest in a long litany list of victims of the WWE's creativity stupidity. I mean, it's the same shit. You turn into Raw, it's three fucking hours. 85% of the show is random thrown together bullshit matches where you're just cramming in spots to try and pop the stupid crowd at any fucking point in time. The promo segments that they do have are so god-awful terrible because the la next time that one of these writers on the creative team or Vince writes a good promo will be the first time in a long fucking time. This shit is awful. It's absolutely awful. The formatting is so freaking pathetic and predictable. Oh, we're going to get a 15-minute authority segment. Oh, we're going to get John Cena saying his typical stupid shtick and dumb dick crap. I mean, think about it this way. Speaking of John Cena, this is how bad it's gotten. This is how boring the WWE is today. And frankly, American pro wrestling is today. People are now trying to look at John Cena... Realizing the situation, whether they want to acknowledge it or understand it or even realize it or not, and use John Cena as a justification for why they continue to watch and why it's not all that bad. Because why would you sit there and waste so much of your time every single week if it's always that bad? People are now saying that John Cena is great in the ring. People are now sitting there and praising John Cena's in-ring work. That's how fucking ridiculous it's got. A guy who can't apply his own finishing maneuver. A guy who the next time he'll tell a story, a really good story in a match, it'll be the first time in a long freaking time. That John Cena, the guy that botches half of his damn moves, including his key signature moves. Oh my fucking Christ. And at the end of the day, it's always the same fucking thing. You feel like every time you watch Raw, whether it's Raw or a special event, that you've wasted your fucking time. Because nothing happened, nothing was accomplished, nothing was developed, nothing was enhanced, and at the end of the day, LOL, Cena wins. It's a fucking waste of time. And it's gotten so bad where it's to the point now where we've gone beyond the people that are just trying to be counterculture to sit there and try and defend Cena in the WWE. 
To the point now where we've got people legitimately defending John Cena because they truly fucking believe and not just because they're be trying to be contrarian assholes. They legitimately believe that he's one of the best wrestlers in the world and one of the best wrestlers in the WWE. And they look forward to seeing John fucking Cena. That reality has sunk in that badly that you know you're going to be stuck with them for several years and you have that guilty pleasure of not wanting to give up on professional wrestling because you have such a passion for it and you have such a love for it that you've now allowed the WWE to take John Cena and make, Cena and make him one of your favorite wrestlers in the ring. I mean, for Christ's sakes, we're talking about how good John Cena is in the ring and not in the bad way of how crap he is. you got people legitimately talking about the greatness of his matches and how good he's gotten and how hard he's working. I mean, that's how boring this shit is. But it's not just the brands. And I can go on and on forever about that. I mean, look at the wrestlers. So many of the wrestlers in the business look the same. They act the same. They fucking wrestle the same. They talk the same. They say the same shit. Not just in their promos. Not just in their interviews. But they also say the same shit out there in the world. When they're hyping up matches on podcasts and on TV interviews, they're saying the same freaking things. When they get into it with fans on Twitter because the fans are acting like idiots or sometimes they bring valid points, the wrestlers always say the same lame-ass type of shit that doesn't accomplish anything. And all the while, when you look at so many of these wrestlers and what they say on social media, why would any of us pay money to see any of these fucking guys? Lame. Boring. Same old shit. Dull. Lacking in humor or any type of entertainment value whatsoever. I mean, just absolutely God-fucking-awful. I mean, we've seen stars, and we've seen really, really big stars throughout our time as a professional wrestling fan. And we see them every once in a while now when the WWE decides to dust off a part-timer like a Brock Lesnar or an even more part-timer like The Undertaker and make them the main event of one of your big four shows because you don't have a fucking choice. I mean, that's how bad the brands are. The WWE has to continue to rely upon bringing back the old Dodgers from years gone by and have the part-time acts like Brock Lesnar because nobody wants to see the full-time roster that they fucking have, period. And again, when you look at the wrestlers, so many of them look the same or act the same, wrestle the same, talk the same, walk the same, say the same fucking shit, are presented the same, it's no wonder. I mean, frankly, honestly, in terms of full-timers today and younger talents today, who really has done enough to earn your money? You might like certain individuals and certain wrestlers. God bless you. You got to have something to hold on to. But what the fuck have they done to sit there and say, I got to pay money to see that guy. I got to sit there and do this. And like I said, when you look at these guys, even when they use social media, holy Christ. It's the same old boring ass bullshit. But even the fans are guilty of this too. We are. We say the same things. We make the same insults at each other. We make the same excuses for the product that we watch. The same defenses of the crap. We crank up the BS outrage every single time something doesn't go our freaking way because we're all butthurt. And all the while, guess what? Ta-da! We fit right into the professional wrestling bubble because no matter how unhappy we are, how much we bitch about it, no matter how much we complain about it, we always fucking come back. We are as equally pathetically predictable of a group as the professional wrestlers themselves are and the wrestling companies in America are. I mean, it's just bad. It's just fucking bad. I mean, oh my God. The ROH bots don't even bot for ROH anymore. The TNA bots don't even bot for TNA anymore. Not to the level or the scope that they did before. We've got people pumping up NXT as the fucking future of wrestling. If that's the future, people, there might not be a future going forward. And WWE is so God blessed bad that they have to bring back Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker to be the main event of their big freaking show of the summer in SummerSlam. And people are praising John Cena's in-ring work. Holy shit. And I think part of the problem is, is this comes down to a, a whole issue with professional wrestling and all components of it. The brands themselves, the wrestlers, the fans. Is that wrestling has a significant identity crisis. 
you know, one of these things about professional wrestling that I've always found confusing is, is it trying to present itself as real or is it trying to be fake? Yes, I use the word fake, 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 fake. Is it trying to be, you know, interactive or is it trying to be kind of standoffish with the audience? Are they trying to sit there and have these guys and girls be their characters 24-7, 365? Or are we going to treat it purely like a TV show where we'll have them be one name on social media, but when they're on screen, they're the freaking characters' names, they are the characters, and so on and so forth. I don't think wrestling has ever figured out since, since the official kayfabe was let out of the bag, whether or not they want to still be a kayfabe type of entertainment brand or if they want to be real. You know, this hybrid shit that they do ultimately doesn't fucking work. And you can just tell when you watch an ROH, a TNA, an NXT, and WWE, it's confusing as fuck because you don't know if they're trying to be real or they're trying to be totally scripted. And you most specifically, excuse me, don't know how they're trying to present themselves to you. You know, and you look at professional wrestling too and so many of these companies, is it about the past or is it about the direction you're heading in the future going forward? Again, WWE is kicking off the dust of The Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar for freaking SummerSlam. You've already done that. You know, you're worrying about a guy who, you know, has been a top guy for you for two plus freaking decades, and you're still in 2015 having to turn to a 50-year-old Undertaker to main event one of your big four shows. But again, John Cena is so awesome that exactly it speaks to the whole problem of just how lame the freaking roster is. No matter what, at the end of the day, it all feeds back to the fucking Cena monster. And if Cena was so freaking entertaining, more people would freaking be watching and talking about this shit. I mean, it even gets boring when you hear the defenses of this asshole. I mean, it's, oh my God, he's so this. He, oh my God, he does that. Oh my God, he's good with the kids and the charities. Oh my God, he's always there. Who gives a shit? The character is boring as piss. And the wrestler is just about as bad as he was freaking 10 damn years ago. But TNA for years was always trying to live off the freaking past. ROH at different times would make Jerry Lynn or freaking J.D. Noble freaking world champion. Holy Christ. Holy Christ. You go on the independent scene and so many of these freaking independent brands are sitting there trying to sit there and be ECW again. ECW died R.I.P. 14 motherfucking years ago. 14 and a half. Let it go. Try to figure out what you're going to be going forward. Try to be the innovative company that ECW once was. Try to do interesting and compelling things. No, we just sit there and want to think about how great shit was 15, 20 years ago and somehow try to resuscitate it back to fucking life. I don't care how much CBL you do to it at this point in time, people. The Monday Night Wars aren't coming back. They're dead. They died RRP 14 years ago as well. The wrestling, the whole business as a whole doesn't know want to, want to go off of the past or want to be about the future. They don't fucking know. And is it about the in-ring action? Is it about wrestling? And what type of wrestling is it about? Is it about telling stories and engaging the audience? Or is it just about going out there, you got 15 minutes, try to pop them with a bunch of kicks, flips, and spots? And then on top of that, is it just about the in-ring action? Or are we about all the other frivolous bullshit? Or if we're all about the frivolous bullshit, why do we even have bother having this? This is how bad wrestling has gotten. I go again to the WWE. They call it sports entertainment. And for so many years, people will sit there and say, oh, the WWE will have people giving birth to a hand. They'll have the freaking Muppets. They'll bring in all these celebrities to be lame-ass guest hosts. And, you know, fair criticism, sure. But WWE doesn't even do that anymore. They're not even fucking sports entertainment. It's like the WWE has conceded that they're fucking bored with the business that they're in, and they don't give a fuck, so they're going to sit there and give you a bunch of lame-ass wrestling over three hours every Monday night, and then SmackDown, whatever the fuck night. And then again on the freaking pay-per-view. Why the hell would I want to sit there and pay for a pay-per-view and watch three or four hours of wrestling when I could just tune into cable, watch USA Network, and get three hours of lame-ass wrestling every Monday night? You can't even use the Muppets and other bullshit anymore as a way to knock WWE because they don't even fucking do that. We can't even get that shit anymore. You know, and, and to be fair, maybe, maybe it's just a matter of I'm changing as a person. Maybe wrestling isn't trying to appeal to me. 
and it's not appealing to me, and I'm not appeal I'm not appealing to professional wrestling. I don't freaking know. Maybe it's in part the fact that I've been doing videos on here for almost five years, and I've run out of topics to talk about. It seems like, and the business isn't doing a whole lot to help me give me new exciting things to potentially talk about or new topics. I don't want to just sit here and regurgitate old talking points and old stories and old videos once again. I mean, part of the whole impetus for doing this video was I was sitting there all week and looking for something to talk about. I was looking for something that I could sink my teeth into, something that I could latch onto, something that I grab, grab hold of. And I got nothing! It seems like the only times that the WWE or any American wrestling company is interesting at all is if somebody gets screwed, somebody gets fired, or somebody dies. Does it literally have to take somebody getting screwed, somebody getting fired, or somebody dying for professional wrestling to be fucking interesting again? You know, maybe I'm getting close to that point where I'm ready to check out. I don't know. I don't want it to be the case. But goddamn, I don't know how much more I could take of this crap, honestly. I mean, I think about four or five years ago compared to now. I watched so much more wrestling. I was watching ROH. I used to watch FCW. I was watching TNA every single week. I was watching Raw. I was watching SmackDown. I was watching all the pay-per-views. Sometimes I'd even watch, you know, something like Superstars or Main Event. Now my professional wrestling viewing, it consists of bits and pieces of three-hour Raws. And the freaking special events that they do. And that's it. Again, part of that is maybe a reflection of me and who I am and where I'm at at this stage of my life. <clears throat> maybe that's part of it. But I think it's just a matter of everybody in the wrestling bubble. The brands, the wrestlers, the fans are just fucking boring as shit. I mean, I hope somebody realizes at some point in time just how boring this fucking is. And they do something to affect positive change and they fix it. Because if you're in that bubble right now and you think wrestling is great in this country and you think the brands are good and this and this, I just wonder what the fuck you're smoking. And in particular, if you're a professional wrestler or you're one of these companies, you're one of the executives in these companies, you should be goddamn ashamed of yourself for the fact that the state of a North American professional wrestling is in the fucking bullshit shape it's in. It's in large part the fault of you assholes. Stop trying to sit there and live in your fantasy world that everything is all fucking hunky-dory just because you get your middling, lame-ass paychecks. And how about you do something about it? This shit's boring and I've had enough. It can't possibly be that hard to be more interesting, can it?